So it was about two summers ago I found myself walking through the streets of Nashville. And there's a Broadway street in Nashville, which is like the Broadway street in New York City, except there's a lot more music and a lot less theater. Um, and there's a lot more homeless people. And so I was walking down the street in Nashville, and we're in the United States, and I was thinking there's no way there's going to be as much medical need, as much poverty, as much of any of that stuff as there would be in, like, developing countries. So I, but then I walked upon this, um, this homeless person, homeless by choice, which, interesting enough, is a large population of hobos, per se. And so I looked at him and started talking to him, and he smiled at me, and he was missing about three or four of his teeth, and I'm like, well, why, why would you not go to a dentist? Like, you, you can't be turned away here in America. We have free medical care for tons of people, free dental clinics, things like that. But there's still medical need in the, Uni in the United States, and so that kind of opened my eyes. Like, if this is going on in the United States, then what would be going on around the world, and what would be going on in countries where there isn't enough money to provide these free clinics and things like that? And so. That got me interested in medical missions, kind of started getting the gears turning, and so um, this is my second year of ISM. I'm studying cardiovascular medicine and medical missions. Uh, my name's Josh Taylor, and I'm under the mentorship of Dr. Samuel Woolbert. So a little bit about me. I'm drum major and tuba player for the band. I am highly involved in youth at First Baptist Church Frisco. I'm an ISM II student. Last year I studied just cardiology. This year I'm adding medical missions to that, and I'm interested in a medical career. And so some quotes I've choose, chosen to define my study the past couple of years. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than men. And to me what that means, it means that you should pour your, pour your life into everything you do, not necessarily just to please people, um, but also to do work of the Lord. And so he says go and care for the poor. So missions is a good way to do that. And then another quote from me, uh, medicine is the only profession that labors incessantly to destroy the reason for its own existence. And so what that quote means to me is that, like medicine, unlike other careers, it's trying to remove the need for there to be doctors. So doctors, in a sense, are working so they don't have to have a job. That's kind of the end goal. And so those are kind of a couple quotes that are defining my study. And so my topic, cardiovascular medicine, um, I'm interested in science, interested in math. Those are, I guess, my best subjects, those kind of get me passionate about different things. Um, heart disease is currently the leading cause of death in America. Um, almost ha half the population presents a major risk factor um, by the time they like reach 50, which would be obesity, um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, family history, things like that. Those are all major risk factors. Um, my personal family has a lot of history with heart disease. Um, my grandfather had heart disease before he was 55, which is a significant risk factor. Um, and my ISM experience last year really kind of solidified that passion for medicine. And so moving forward, studying um, treatment in rural and underdeveloped areas, medical missions. Um, I've seen that the risk factors of heart disease can easily be treated with medication and physical activity. That's a lot of preventative medicine, and I see that that can be easily taken care of in developing countries as well as here. And so um, kind of want to apply that to the mission field. It's a really good source for ministry. If you can provide people health, you can provide them um, the gospel, things like that. And then there are a lot of medical ethics concerns um, with the current way we treat medical missions. And so I'd like to kind of get into the field and address some of those concerns. And so some of the research that I've done into medical missions, there's a lot of Christian medical missions. It's the provision of free medical treatment with the goal to show God's love and to share the gospel. And so there's multiple as aspects. You can do building clinics, which would actually not really involve much actual medical treatment. Um, you can do temporary medical excursions where doctors will go to these countries for one to two weeks and they'll just treat as many people as they can and just try to, like, I guess, subsidize or... I guess kind of manage the health system um, just by trying to provide temporary care. Um, there's also physician training where people go into countries that already have lots of doctors and they'll just teach those doctors how to be better doctors to so supplement their training. Um, there's also full-time medical professional in an area so larger organizations will go, they'll build those clinics, they'll provide the temporary medical trips as well 
and then they'll plant a physician there to take care of reoccurring medical needs. So say someone needs a knee surgery, they can send in surgeons to take care of that knee surgery, but then they'll also have a doctor there to take care of any reoccurring issues that go along with that, uh, make sure they're recovering okay, things like that. And so those are a bunch of the aspects. There's also med missions residency programs, which would be where you're finishing up your medical training, um, you finish medical school, and you finish some of your residency here in the United States, but then you go over to these developing countries and you continue to learn how to be a doctor, things like that, and you're still taking care of these people in a mission sense. And so some common missions organizations, there's North Texas Missions, which is located here in North Texas. Um, there's the World Medical Mission, which is through the Samaritan's Purse, and that's a large organization. And then churches and other independent groups also do medical mission trips. So the interviews I've been on, first interview is with Bob Johnson, who is the founder of North Texas Missions. He, his organization, they do two types of trips. They do just like, I guess what you could call typical medical trips where you, um, like they go and they build houses, they do things like that. But they also do medical mission trips. And so they do like medicine, they do optometry, they do dental medicine. Um, and so what I talked to him about is kind of like give me an overview of medical missions. And so he said on his trips, um, they don't have to really deal with that many foreign relations. These developing countries, they'll take as much help as they can get. So as far as like getting permits to operate, um, permits to do medical treatment, that's not really an issue. Um, they even got a like $50,000 um, auto refractor to make glasses into the country without paying any taxes on it because they just wanted all this help, they wanted all this medical help, and so they're willing to kind of bend a few rules to get this assistance in. Um, there was a brief discussion on ethics, just kind of asked him like, what, what concerns do you see with this? Um, he said there are certainly some concerns with not providing as good of treatments as we provide in the United States. Um, but he said, for the most part, the people there are there to help, and they're still working as hard as they can, and they're still providing as good of treatment as they can given the parameters of the area. And then he also shared that his organization has a focus on deaf education and special education training. Uh, in, these, in these countries, the people when they're in, when they're, before they're born and in the years after they're born, they are exposed to a lot more, um, I guess, long-term medical issues. So if they get a fever, the fever lasts for two weeks instead of two days, things like that. And so because of that, they develop a lot of really unfortunate um, disabilities and like special education di disabilities and so they also teach the locals how to treat those and so that's an awesome aspect of their organization. I also interviewed Dr. Bazell, who's a part-time missions doctor. He also works here in the United States as a family practice physician. Um, he talked to me more about the medical side of missions. He told me the common the most common cases that they find um, and the types of medical resources that they find. Uh, a lot of the countries don't have any real specialties, so it's a lot of like general medicine, general surgery, things like that. And so he says in the future he'd like to see some more of that. Another interview I had was with Dr. Colby Marsh, who is an optometrist who also works with North Texas Missions. Um, and he talked about optometry and just the culture of missions. Um, he said the people in these areas, as they're receiving treatment, they're so much more thankful and they're so much more patient than patients in here in America. Um, he said they'll wait in line for multiple hours wrapped around the building. Um, and when they get there, they'll, they won't complain at all about the wait. They won't do any of that stuff. He said he just likes medical missions because you get to go and do medicine. You don't have to worry about all the paperwork, all the things like that. And he said he also loves the ability to spread the gospel. So another interview I had was with nurse Erin Baker. Um, she's a nurse who also works with North Texas Missions. Um, she went on a mission trip, I guess, two years ago to Honduras. And her, she said her experience was extremely eye-opening. She didn't really understand how much need there really was in these areas. Um, she talked about how she would see these kids who would come in and they wouldn't be able to hear and she would think it, they were deaf but then they look into their ears and they just see that they had so much earwax in their ears that they wouldn't be able to hear and so in America where we would know like okay you just clean out your ears once a month or once or twice a week you know whatever um, they don't know that and they don't have the resources to do that so I mean just simple medical problems they just escalate into these major problems and so she said it was a very rewarding experience she really loved the ability to I mean like 
Dr. Marcia just to practice medicine, and she really encouraged me to go on one of these trips. She says um, it wouldn't, it's really hard to understand like what all is going on here in the United States over there, but you have to actually go and experience it. And so, my last interview was with Dr. Sam Alexander, and he's a retired OBGYN, and he was a missions educator. And so he kind of provided me a different view on missions. Um, the previous people I had interviewed had gone on these mission trips for one or two weeks and they provided treatment. This guy, he would go once or twice a year for a week or so to Southeast Asia and he would train physicians there. And so uh, he talked to me a lot more about ethical concerns. He said, if you go over to Southeast Asia and you provide the same two week clinics that you provide in Honduras, you're putting doctors out of jobs. And so is that really the best thing to do when you can go over there and train the doctors and still provide better medical care but you can also provide them a better livelihood, like for the actual physicians working there. And so he kind of provided some different views because going into this interview, I was thinking, well, let's just send clinics to every developing area in the world, and that's how we're going to treat these issues. And then he said, well, that's actually not the best thing you can do with your resources. It might be better to build clinics. It might be better to train physicians, things like that. And so that was my interview with Dr. Alexander. Um, some research in cardiology, I did a couple more researches in that. Um, breakthroughs in cardiology, uh, there was a catheter to the heart, um, which was actually done by a student, a resident, who, was, um, who took a urinary catheter and ran it up into his heart because he wanted to get drugs into the heart. And so he cut a hole in his leg and he ran a catheter up in himself. And then he walked down the stairs into the radiology department and he took a x-ray of his chest and they walked back upstairs with the catheter still in his heart and took the catheter out, sewed himself back up, and then went and looked at the x-rays. And so he did the first heart catheterization on himself with a urinary catheter. And so I thought that was a pretty crazy story. Um, and then medica medications are another great breakthroughs. Um, like cholesterol medications, blood pressure medications, things like that. Um, they're always getting better, always getting cheaper, easier to access, easier to produce, and so that's, a, that's going to spill over into missions as well, um, easier to get medications to those populations. And so the poly pill is an example of that. It's a combination of cholesterol medications, blood pressure medications, and statins, and it can be given to large populations um, to lower the risk of disease. Um, I mean, it's certainly still in the developmental phase, but it could it's just one example of a cost-effective medical, like medicine solution for um, heart disease problems in these countries. And so medical ethics, I've done a lot of research on that. Um, it's the study of good things to do versus the best thing to do. So like I said earlier, a good thing to do might be to send a clinic to Southeast Asia, but the best thing to do might be to train their physicians. And so what resources do different areas need? And so like Honduras needs doctors, West Africa needs doctors because of the Ebola outbreak. Um, but Southeast Asia, they already have doctors, things like that. Um, North Africa, they need a lot of clinics and just places for these doctors to work. So there's different needs in all these different areas. And then foreign residency programs, um, because the doctors haven't completely finished training and they're going over to these areas and practicing, there's a lot of concerns with, um, like, is that ethical? Is that the right thing to do? Um, is less quality care still better than no medical care at all? And so that's always a consideration that you have to take into place and so moving forward that kind of inspired my original work a little bit um, the problem that I found is that mission organizations have the tendency to establish blueprints that they would of like how they're going to treat these medical issues and so um, like I was kind of thinking going into the interview with Dr. Alexander they well let's just go and build a medical clinic in each of these areas the same exact medical clinic will provide the same exact medical supplies the same exact doctors and we'll fix the same exact problems. But the problem is the medical needs in these different countries are as, as diverse as the countries themselves. And so the, to best serve the different countries, it is important to research the specific needs of the country before developing a medical plan. So if you like look up here at the screen, like there's a picture of India, Swaziland, the USA, Malaysia, Laos, Russia, Niger, and Mexico. And all the people in all those countries look different, and they all have different needs. For example, in Niger, they might need clean water, where Laos, they're throwing water on the street and things like that. And so it's really difficult to go and try and apply the same solutions to all these different problems. And so that's what inspired my original work. My solution was to 
create an assessment of medical need, um, to look at the general country statistics, including the GDP per capita, the total population, life expectancy, how many physicians there are per 1,000 people. And so looking at those statistics and just a general overview of the medical system, what their hospitals look like, um, upper right is a hospital in Niger, um, bottom right a graffitied hospital in Honduras, which is interesting. Um, so just an overview of basically what their hospitals look like, what their doctor training look like, things like that. An analysis of their major medical concerns such as HIV, um, tuberculosis, non-communicable diseases, um, another a sign there that says no eye insulina. Uh, they don't have insulin at that specific hospital so that would be another medical concern. Um, and just and then also providing a recommendation for what medical assistance they should provide. And so um, that's kind of the solution I chose to do. And so the objectives of this project was to provide resources to people who were planning medical mission trips, um, kind of giving them a baseline of where to start. So they know they want to go into a country in, say, they want to go South America, like a Latin American country. And so they kind of look at this packet, this research that I've done and kind of give a get a feel for what the different countries need um, so they can choose which area best suits their capacities and then also to gain experience researching medical systems um, a lot of the information a lot of the terminology in these different countries is a little bit different from the terminology we use here in the United States but being able to research those and kind of gain an understanding of those um, will allow me to do that in my career when I'm looking into medical missions and also to gain an understanding of the extent of medical circumstances in these countries outside the United States. So I had experienced a little bit of some of the medical concerns in the United States, but um, just to kind of doing this research, you get to see like some of them, one of the countries has a life expectancy of like 53 years. And so we're, when we're 53, we're still working, you know? And so it's just kind of some perspective of what, we're, what the differences are in healthcare in these countries. And so an example of like one of the slides from my original work would be, here's one over the United States. Um, so region North America, we have 318 million people. Um, average GDP is 52,800. Um, there's half a physician for 1,000 people. Life expectancy almost 80 years. Um, and so that's kind of an, the general statistics I included um, and then how much of healthcare cost is handled privately versus how much is handled by the state. That's a major consideration for these developing countries because the more that is handled by the state, the more, um, the larger the amount of the poorer population is able to receive training. Um, physician training in the United States, eight years of formal education followed by um, residency and fellowship. Mission plan, um, the greatest healthcare need in the United States right now is preventative medicine um, to keep people from getting sick in the first place. Um, in a homeless sense, in a mission sense, the homeless population is at the greatest need. Um, just education that there is treatment available and kind of providing information about where they can go get that tra treatment. Um, that's kind of how you would um, do a medical missions thing here in the United States. And so a developing country like Honduras, um, region Central America, they have 8 million people, 4,800 is their GDP per capita. They have about a third of a physician per 1,000 people. Life expectancy is still fairly good at 70 years of age. Um, and so then just research that. They have nine MRIs in the entire country of Honduras. All nine of them are owned by a private hospital system. And so the general population does not have access to MRIs, which is a major diagnostic tool. So that would be a concern. Um, the medical treatments are good but they do not reach the rural population so the mission plan for that country would be to go and provide those clinics that um, North Texas Missions provide and so that those are ex examples I did that for 10 countries and so moving forward I hope to share my research with Bob Johnson of North Texas Missions and Jeff Larson the missions pastor at my church um, so if anybody comes to them asking questions about medical missions and mission trips in general they would be able to provide this information to those people so they can kind of like prepare for those mission trips um, ethically responsibly and so and then there's also potential for a final product if I were to look into one of those countries or two of those countries and really dig up even more information like where the hospitals are located um, what specific populations are not being treated 
Um, I could develop an even more specific plan and potentially even develop a mission trip for one of those areas. And so that's where I see myself moving forward with this um, research that I've done. And so to close my presentation, um, I just try to remember that whatever I do, I need to do my work heartily as for the Lord and that through this research and through um, I just medicine in general, we can kind of destroy the need for those treatments in the future and we can kind of make the world a healthier place and a better place to live. So thank you.